Let's take a look at this problem, taken from the American Mathematics Competition AMC 12. For i equals the square root of minus 1, and for all integers n that are non-negative, define real sequences a n and b n by 2 plus i to the n equals a n plus b n times i. Evaluate the sum of a n b n over 7 to the power of n from n equals 0 to infinity. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. So when we see a definition of an and bn, it might be tempting to uh, simply expand this part, the 2 plus i and whole thing to the power n uh, with the binomial theorem, but then the expression would be uh, very tedious. So another way is to rewrite this kind of complex numbers uh, from the uh, so-called the real dividing real and imaginary parts in uh, instead we write into uh, some something called polar form instead the so-called polar form is to uh, make use of the um, it's similar to polar coordinates it's about a uh, kind of the magnitude or you or we say the modulus and also argument which is actually uh, the angle of the line uh, between of the line 2 plus i that, rep that represents 2 plus i okay say it's 2 for the real part and 1 for the imaginary part and then here's 2 plus i and we consider the angle instead so this is the modulus which is in fact equal to uh, square root of 2 square plus 1 square equals square root of 5 and then here's an angle which is the argument defined by uh, tangent theta equals a half. Similarly, we can deduce that uh, sine theta is 1 over square root of 5, cos theta is 2 over square root of 5. So that's um, about the polar form. Now, 2 plus i can now be written as root 5, which is the modulus, times e to the i theta, where tangent theta equals a half. And by rewriting this, we have root 5 e to the i theta, whole thing to the power n, equals a n plus b n i. And so root 5 to the n, e to the i n theta equals a n plus b n i. Here, we define e to the i theta by cos theta plus i sine theta. And so by comparing real and imaginary parts, we can say that a n equals square root of 5 whole to the power n cos n theta and b n equal something similar but sine n theta instead. Now um, we have successfully um, written a n and b n into some very condensed form so we can now turn to evaluate that sum instead. So this sum now becomes square root of 5 to the power n cos n theta times square root of 5 to the power n sine n theta over 7 to the power n and that equals 5 to the 7 whole to the power n times sine n theta times cos n theta and with the half, uh, double angle formula recalling that sine of 2 theta is actually 2 times sine theta cos theta so this matches what we have at the moment so that's actually equals to a half times sine 2n theta now at this stage we can actually make use of the polar form again and rewrite the sine term
as the imaginary part, imaginary part of e to the i times 2n theta. Now, from this definition, e to the i theta equals cos plus i sine, we can say this is cos of 2n theta plus i times sine of 2n theta. So, sine of 2n, sine 2n theta is exactly um, the imaginary part of e to the i times 2n theta. Now, with this, I can put everything into the imaginary part bracket by saying it is the imaginary part of 5 over 7 to the power n times e to the i times 2n theta. And similarly, because um, the sum of uh, the complex, uh, sum of the imaginary parts of the complex numbers are actually equal to the imaginary part of the sum. So we can kind of um, swap the sequence, swap the operation sequence. So I can swap the signs. And rewrite this into 5 over 7 times e to the i n, sorry, i times 2 theta and the whole thing to the power n. Now, the sum inside, labeled with green, is actually a um, geometric series um, with a modulus that is between minus 1 and 1 because the term inside 5 over 7 times um, the e power actually has modulus 5 over 7. So uh, I can apply the infinite series formula which is the first term is uh, just 1 because the zero power is 1. And then the common ratio is 5 over, uh, 5 over 7. 5 over 7 times um, e to the i times 2 theta. So Five over seven times. Now we have to re, uh, calculate e to the i times two theta. Now we know that e to the i theta is just two plus i. So e to the i times two theta is a squared. So it's three plus four i. So oh no, it should be uh, over square root of five over square root of five. So when we square it. And it's over 5 and over 5. So it's 3 over 5 type plus 4 over 5 times i. And it's a half times the imaginary part of 1 over 1 minus 3 over 7 plus 4 over 7i. Now we keep going. 1 over... 4 minus 4i, and the numerator is actually 7. And we further rationalize. Now we can uh, safely just take the imaginary part, which is uh, a half times 7 times 4 over 32. And that's um, 7 over 16. So that's our final answer. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to suggest any alternatives in the comments. If you like my videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel right now. Thank you for your support. See you next time.